The following is a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Welcome everybody, we're here at the 2022 Summer Chess Classic at the St. Louis Chess Club. We have two great round robin tournaments for you to bring you all of the action. I am Grandmaster Alejandro Ramirez here with my good friend, Grandmaster Christian Carrillo. Alejandro, always a pleasure to be here in Studio B with you, casting the games of the best chess players we have here on soil in St. Louis. Now, talk to us about these two tournaments. Uh, what do they mean for the St. Louis Chess Club and for these players? I have to say this has a personal meaning to me. This is a great project. We have a void in the chess world. Tournaments that really exemplify going from open events, really strong 2500s to the elite. This 2600 Grandmaster tournaments, this round robin events, they're very rare. And I love having the summer classics here. The classic series is a great place for tournaments, for players that are very talented to really reach their potential. A great opportunity indeed. And let's actually take a look at the standings in Group A. Yu Yang Yi is leading with four points, tied for second position. We have Jonas Bier, Abimanyu Mishra, and Benjamin Gledura with three and a half points apiece, tied for fifth position. We have Sam Sevian, who unfortunately lost a tremendous game against uh, the more experienced Ilya Smith. Mirin, he's tied with Aram Hakobian for the fifth position. Tied for seventh, we have Nico Teodoro, Grigory Oparin, and Ilias Mirin. And what do we have in the B group, Alejandro? Uh, we have a very tight pack, but actually, JJ Ali Mirandi is currently uh, sitting first place on four and a half points with Guillermo Vasquez. The difference is that JJ Ali Mirandi is actually facing Brandon Jacobson today. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately for the tournament, Brandon Jacobson had to withdraw due to illness. We don't know if it's COVID, but, uh, we don't think it is, but there are other illnesses in the world and he did <laughs> fell, did he fell sick. Yep. Uh, had to withdraw from the event and all the players that he has faced so far, they will retain their score against him, but because he withdrew past a 50% mark, uh, all the players that he will face since then will receive a full point by, including JJ today. So Guillermo Vasquez actually needs a win to keep up uh, with the Turkish player. Absolutely, and let's take a look at the format of these two events. We have two 10-player round robins. Unfortunately, both of the events are down to nine players. Ray Robson, unfortunately, tested positive for a COVID. And as you were mentioning, Alejandro Brandon Jacobson had to withdraw as well. 90 minutes for the first 40 moves, 30 minutes for the rest of the game. Also, the players are getting a 30 second increment starting from move one. And how about the schedule, Alejandro? Well, the schedule is pretty simple. We have two rounds left. I'm not really sure why it says uh, all three of them. <laughs> but uh, today is Thursday, June 9th, which means that we are playing round eight right now at 1 p.m. And tomorrow, because we have the potential of playoffs, remember that this tournament, it's not determined by mathematical pool calls or Sonnen Burger or anything yep. like that. We're straight up going into a playoff played on the board at 5 p.m. To accommodate that, we will be starting two hours earlier tomorrow, both the uh, game and the commentary. Uh, the commentary will start at 1.30 p.m. To join us then to determine the winner of the Summer Chess Classic, uh, if necessary. We want to see them battle yeah. until uh, the end, and that is exactly why we have the playoffs. Also, you can engage with us. Reach us on social media at hashtag Summer Chess Classic on Twitter. Also, you're probably following uh, this show either on YouTube or on Twitch. On Twitch, both on Twitch and YouTube, we do have a promotion for every $75 you donate. A player, a young kid here in St. Louis will get a full semester of chess coaching. Tell us a bit about that, Alejandro. Well, we have in the St. Louis Chess Club a full breadth mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of chess education. We go all the way from scholastic chess, going from underprivileged schools here in the St. Louis area, all the way to the elite of chess, Magnus Carlsen and Fabiana oh, yeah. Kawana coming oh, here yeah. for the Singfield Cup, the US Championship. And through that, we do need to bring these players up to space. Yep. And one of the great programs that we have is that for every $75, as you mentioned, we donate, we'll be able to donate this to a chess 
talented kid. Absolutely. They'll be going here for chess lessons with Varu Janakovi and with yourself, with myself. So it really goes a long way. Saying five dollars really goes a long way here at the St. Louis Chess Club. And I encourage you to donate to our cause. It's a great opportunity for uh, these young talents as well as a great mission of uh, the St. Louis uh, Chess Club. And let's take a look at the pairings, Alejandro. We're going to start with Group A. We have Grisha Oparin versus Jonas Bier, Nicolas Theodorou versus Sam Sevian, Ilya Smirin, who's coming off a win, a tremendous a victory tremendous win, yeah. against Sam Sevian with the black pieces. Right now, he will be facing the youngest competitor in the event, Abimanyu Mishra and Yu Yangi versus Aram Hakobian. And of that course, ha that has to be the thing of the day. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, that has to be it. Uh, Aram comes down from a topsy turvy event. Really, on round three, he had a disaster, but he bounced back on round five. A great win against Jonas Bier. Puts him on 50%. Remember that his round four uh, game against Ray Robson doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Yu Yangi has really had a great event. Uh, he's on plus two. Honestly, could have been on plus three if Ray kept playing, but uh, he could have been on plus one as well. Uh, honestly, true. Taking into account the first round. And okay. the game that he won against Theodore. I mean, that, oh, that, 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 well. that draw was actually very suspicious as well. So this could be a great game. Yu Yangi playing for the victory of the tournament. I mean, if he wins the tournament today, it is possible. There's a mathematical chance There's that There's a mathematical he clinches. chance that he clinches today. So this is going to be absolutely our game of the day. Absolutely, and uh, as we see uh, one of the players on the screen right now, we have Aram Hakobian pondering his next move. So and let's take a look at the position right away, absolutely. Uh, see what's going on, because it is a relatively symmetrical position mm -hmm. in which as a grandmaster, I think you immediately think one side has the pressure and one side it is, is defending. It, it, it has to be white. It has to be white. White is currently defending, you can see that there is more activity for the white side in this position. You there's can, a C file control. There's a C file there's control. A weakness. Knight takes C5 six. type of tricks. Ooh. Yeah, they don't quite work right now. So let's show why it doesn't work right yes. now, because it does attack the queen after all, of right? Of course. But you cannot take on d5 because rook takes c8. Exactly, mm -hmm. yes. And unfortunately for uh, white, there is this refutation of just simply picking up the rook yeah. on c2. Now you can take the queen, but I'm going to take this rook with a check. King to h2, and I'm going to follow it up with king takes c7, which at the same time, not only that it captures a piece, but also defends the knight on d7. Yeah, this actually doesn't work out for the white pieces, which is uh, crucial, mm -hmm. and the reason why Arama can play this. But it still feels that white is the one in pressure. The bishop on d3 is better than its counterpart on a8. The pawn on a6 is certainly weaker than its counterpart on b2. Absolutely. Uh, my original, uh, and again, to remind the viewers, we are not analyzing this with an engine. We have actually no idea what the engine says, but I feel white is just better in this position. It, it, it has to be. Now, as uh, we take a look at this one, we have to come up with a plan. This is how you approach this type of uh, closed center mm -hmm. positions. Yes. You have to find the right plan. The way I see it is I'm trying to make your attack on the B file from the white's perspective yeah. obsolete. And the way I can do that is by placing this pawn potentially either on b3 or on b4. If I place it on b4, then I have to defend it with the knight from a2. If I place it on b3, then all of yeah. my pieces, or at least two of my pieces, are nicely protecting uh, that uh, pawn. And after that, I can just simply maneuver around the c file because this is the key factor in this position. Um, at some point, I would want to play knight to e2 or knight to a2, exchange one pair of rooks on the c file and ask you questions of how are you going to stop me from invading on the eighth rank. Knight to a2 is my uh, recommendation on, on first glance, of course. I, I mean, I feel like black is really relying on the fact that knight d6 will somehow hold on to his position. Yes. Because this is the remaneuvering that he's trying to do, right? I assume that in the past couple of moves, Actually, mm -hmm. it's been a while, mm -hmm. but somehow black has played the move knight f6 to e8. Yes. Uh, this is currently a well-known exchange yeah. slot kind Actually, of structure. It has been a while. It's been a while, right? <laughs> you would have thought that by this point the knight will land on d6, yes. which is where he wants to go. Yeah, so all the way uh, at move 17, and right now <laughs> yeah, we're at move knight, 25. Yeah. He played this move knight to e8, queen to a4, b5, queen to b3. It's funny, this move queen a4 provoking right. the move b5, yeah. Yeah, 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 just uh, trying to create uh, mm -hmm. another weakness in the position. Because, of course, we know we see the c file, unfortunately, both um, 
of the players are uh, engaging yeah. in a conflict on uh, the C file. Nevertheless, you have to find another weakness in Black's camp, and this is exactly what White is doing. Queen to B3, provoking B5, as you mentioned, Alejandro. Now, Queen to A2. Um, why Queen to A2, you might ask? Now, I'm looking at the move A4, of course, right? And after B4, generally, you respond with the move Knight to A2. Why did he play this move Queen to A2 is uh, quite puzzling to Queen me. Queen A2, I have... actually. Yeah. Now I understand. Okay, so Bishop B5. what he wants to do is get the Knight ah, close to A5. Okay. Knight to D2, Knight it, to it's D3. It's such a devious knight. move, actually. Oh. It's Queen A2. You see it on the board and you're like, wait, wait, what, wait a minute, what is what he trying is the to point? do? Yeah. Uh, so let's see how they continue to look. To, and this is probably what uh, Aram thought as well. Like, does he want to repeat? Does he want it, to go back to B3? It's a funny position because neither side has a clear plan. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And and he did find this beautiful plan with knight d2, knight b3, knight a5. And we are in this position right now. Now, now before we get into the midst of uh, the position, let's take a look at the B group as well, Alejandro. We're going to uh, look at the pairings of the B group in round number eight. And absolutely, uh, the most important thing, of course, to remember is that Brandon Jacobson unfortunately fell ill, so he will be forfeiting the rest of his games. JJ Alimarandi gets a full point, which is crucial for the standings as he is one of the leaders. Uh, Tigran Harutiniano will be playing against Christopher Yu, Nico Checo against Camille Dragun. Guillermo Gasquez, which is one of the leaders as well, has an important game against Joe Jan Chao. That probably would be the right game of the day if we didn't have the game of John Burke against Misha Antipo. Both of those, which are surging players, as you can see, John Burke on your screen, it started not so well with a minus one score in the first uh, three games. Bounced back beautifully with a win on round four and a win on round seven. Meanwhile, Misha Antipa with a great win on round six and actually saving a couple of positions he oh, shouldn't so have. <laughs> he was completely yeah, lost yeah. in at least three positions, three games. Um, but here we are, he's on plus one. He's a contender for the top spot. So uh, I have to give it to him. He's been holding on to his guns. Now, let's take a look at the game and see exactly what's happening because this one i have to say it's quite a tense affair well let's take a look um hard to say uh both players first of all the, the time situation is worrisome mm -hmm. uh you can see that uh John Burke has currently 18 minutes and antipo has a little bit over 20. 21 minutes and yes. that would normally not be a big deal but when you think about the fact that it's <laughs> move 22. move 22 still 18 moves to go and 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 a, that's the thing a very tense battle Right. Any single inaccuracy from either side is going to cost them dearly. Yeah, it's a very funny position because uh, the structure really spouts out that this was an anti-Berlin an anti mm -hmm. uh, with the move d3. It, which it, it is... was actually a uh, Joko Piano. Really? Yes, yes. It, it, it was a Joko Piano. It started off as bishop to c4, c3, and then we got... Um, into this oh. position and perhaps uh, we can see the analysis board as well yeah i'm actually surprised about the move already i just i just gotta uh, give it a look mm -hmm. i really would have expected this from an anti-berlin because it is rare that white allows this pawn on d5 to go to d4 all the way to d4 yeah in, in the italian usually you take it on d5 absolutely yeah he decided to uh, uh, allow that tension which in return, yeah. allowed Black to play this move D4, D4. Try to weaken. Now, the plan of this move D4 is try to weaken the dark squares. Because, of course, if White goes C4, then you have some uh, problems yeah. to contend with. Bishop to B, uh, C5, coming to B4, potentially exchanging the dark square bishop and creating havoc on the queen side. Now, if you allow the pawn to stay on D4, then at any point, it is mm -hmm. Black who has the option of taking on C3 and opening up under his accord, the D file, potentially creating some threats yeah. on the pawn on D3. So that reminds me of the game we played in San Francisco. We played the game in San Francisco? <laughs> I, 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 of course you don't remember, I beat you. <laughs> uh, there you go, I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't think we ever played in San Francisco. We played in San Francisco, I, we played in Spanish. I would remember that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> this is fake news. <laughs> we played in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> we will investigate that. We Cut will up. investigate that for sure. Uh, <laughs> what tournament was it? The uh, Chingis Invitational. Ah, yeah, okay, now I remember. Yeah, yes, you remember, I remember. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that tournament somehow escaped my mind. Um, so we have this move G4. 
Um, oh, yeah, the, 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 the impression I get is that White has a very strong idea on the king side. <laughs> yeah, I G5. mean, like, yeah, G5 <laughs> is going to come very strongly, yes. yeah? Yes. Even Queen F3, Rook G1, G5 to prepare it uh, yes. with some time. What is Black doing in the meantime? That's a very, very good question, and I have to say, I've been looking, let, let's take it a few moves back. Look at the position that we have right now on the board, right? And what has Black done in the meantime? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. This bishop to c5, queen to f8, f6, queen to f7, and white has improved his position tremendously right now. Um, I don't want to say decisively because I don't know what the assessment of the position is. Nevertheless, if I would have to choose a side, I would definitely go for the white side. I don't think that black has any direct counterplay. I, I yeah. agree with you. Just because around the plans for white is more obvious. I think that if you told me, look at the engine evaluation, it's probably like zero or whatever. <laughs> We're not looking at We're not looking engine. at the engine evaluation. We're looking at a practical point of view. And if you, if you feel that G5 is going to come with a huge threat, mm -hmm. black is the one under pressure that actually has to react to it somehow. And as you were mentioning, Alejandro, you don't have to hurry with g5. You can play rook to g1, queen to f3, defend the knight on f1. I have to say, um, I, I, I do like John Burke's chances, and I don't see, and this is what worries me, um, for Antipov, I don't see his counter chances. Now, you would like to weaken the pawn on d3, potentially by exchanging the light square bishop. I was, I was actually wondering about that. Could you even start you with the... You can start with the pawn taking on c3 and sure. then going bishop b3. Yes, you can definitely do that. The problem is, once you remove the bishop from b6, mm -hmm. this, this knight lives forever on f5. Yeah, because h6 is weak. Yes, you mm -hmm. cannot play g6. The pawn on h6 drops mm -hmm. every single time. Um, so I will gladly exchange it. And now I'm going to hope and probably I will checkmate you. You're going to check yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely It's not very check. nice, Christian. <laughs> not, not only that I'm checkmating you, I, it, it, it's, it's going to be very ugly. Because the way I see it, you take, take, and now queen coming to h5, followed by g6, queen to h7. If you do take on g5, however, I have the other knight coming if I want to. Knight to f3, knight takes g5, I can start with queen to h. It's looking horrendous right now. Um, I, 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 I'm trying to find a way. Okay. I think I found a resource. I'm going to go bishop to f8. The only idea in the position that I can see for black is to play the move g6. I, I and, hate and, this knight. And the, the thing is that g6 is actually kind of an annoying move. The, the knight on f5 is the strongest part of my attack. Yes. If I don't get g5 in with my knight on f5, I don't really have one. Exactly. And the problem with moving the move h5, which secures my knight on f5, you mm -hmm. don't really want to take on f5 yourself, mm -hmm. it doesn't allow me to break on g5 later. So it kind of stalls my attack. Yes, absolutely. So uh, bishop takes f5, probably at this point. Now, you still have knight to f3 coming to g6. Well, in a long time, right? Because knight f3, queen h5. In, but in a long time, yeah. So I have to prepare that with queen, queen to g4, yeah. get the queen out first, and then only... And even once you get the knight to g6, it doesn't actually do much. It doesn't do much. So which is one of those funny Berlin positions, right? Mm. Where you expand on the king side and you actually make some uh, pseudo threats against the king on h7. Doesn't necessarily mean that black's yeah, gonna be afraid. It's it's an interesting position, I have to say, and uh, this is uh, worthy of the game of the round for us in, in Group B. I have mm. to say. Uh, Absolutely. Let's move to Move A, though. We we, we picked a good one. Um, you want to go back to Group A, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. Um, oh, by the way, let's try to take a look at this game between Oparin and Bier because Ooh. before we uh, came on live, it looked as if Oparin is breaking through. And right now, things are getting a bit wild because Bjerg just played this move knight to g6. I'm free. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What if I take it? Rook what if take, that's, that's a rook very good rook question. Rook takes c2, right? Rook takes c2 has to be uh, the move. Now, the problem with rook takes c2 is not only that you're going to take on g2, but you actually threaten checkmate. So let's continue the line. Let's say I go take, gh, right? king h8, and queen g6. Exactly. The idea is that you're protecting uh, the g2 square, so mm -hmm. like rook f2, rook, uh, king g1, rook g2 does not come with check. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Um, what do you play there after queen g6? 
Uh, I assume there's some point. So here. there's no other check outside of F2 and E1. No, there's rook E1. You can go rook E1 and queen then follow C4. with queen C4, but then I go king F2. Yeah, I don't see a... Well, you have you queen You do D4. take on D4, but then I go king, king G3. G3. And that's the end, right? That's the end of it. Because you don't have time to take on E1, mm -hmm. that's going to be a checkmate. Um, that looks like it's over, yeah. Yes. So if you don't have that, then... What do you do? Rook to f2 is going to be met by king to g1. I don't see how this helps you. This no. Queen g7 is such a huge threat. All right. So, and by the way, this is all... Is no, knight, knight, knight g6 is played. Knight to g6 is played. Now the question is... Well, you, you could take with the queen, I guess. Do you want to do this, though? No, not really, yeah. But how bad is it? Hmm. How bad is it? Not as bad as you would think, right? Exactly. Yeah, uh, it's not like black is losing immediately. Unless this comes on the board, followed by rook to c7. But now, now you go rook e7. It's not that easy. Yeah, if this pawn on g6 was somehow easily defended, I think that you can think of an immediate win. But even take, take rook c5, rook a7, I have to do so much counting. Right, <laughs> takes rook a4, rook c1, a3. Rook c1, a2. This cannot be king, very... Seven. I don't think this It doesn't feel right, right? No, no, no. This cannot be winning for, for, for white. Um, no. In the best case, I think you're going to take the pawn on a2, and I'm going to capture the pawn on d4. All right. So do I have any other options? What if I just defend my knight? I mean, you are threatening uh, something like c2. Right. So you want to start with rook to e1. With rook e1, maybe rook c2. Okay, rook to c2. You have to play queen a1. Queen a1 is forced. Which is the only move, right? And then I just move my king. King to f2. Yeah. He's actually taken on g6, so I expect to move queen e2. Because rook e2, I think, will determine what's lost. He must have ca calculated something. Yeah, um, queen e2 is forced, yeah? Queen, queen e2 has to be forced. Uh, yeah. Queen e2, yeah. rook e2. Yeah. And I think it's going to be played very, very quickly. Um, queen takes e2, queen takes e2, rook takes e2. What is the follow-up? Something tells me that this is not the most precise way of playing this. Right. But let's say I take okay, and then take. I go rook to c5. I mean, the thing is... Maybe this is enough. Black, is, bla black is down a lot of activity. Uh, the king on f1 will always escape perpetuals pretty easily. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Um, and there's no way to set them up. It's not like a position where you play rook a2, suddenly you're throwing checkmate. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I completely agree with everything you're saying. The problem is, um, I don't see exactly how to break through if I just simply defend all of my pawns. Like, uh, I'm going to lose well, this you, one, I you understand can, You can't defend like d5 is the thing. I think so rook takes d5 is fine. So you take on d5. Yeah, of course. That's fine. Now I'm going to go rook 2. Actually, no, I'm going to go a2. I'll okay. go rook a3. A5. Sure. A2. Rook BA7. Now you have to go rook BA7. And now I go here. And then we fight this, huh? Exactly. Take on A2. You take on take A2, on I D4. take on D4. And then if you lose this one as well without picking up the pawn on A2. But I don't think I will. Probably it's not. kind of difficult, yeah, because I play rook f7 and then I put my other rook on a7. You'll and never then get what? to. I'll, I'll figure it out from there, I think. This but one that's the thing. You're one pawn exchange away from being an easy draw. You're not, gonna, you're not gaining h7. Come on. I, I would probably win f6 for. Uh, yeah, probably not. Probably yeah. not. No, I look, I, I give white better chances. This, this to must win. be a win. This must be a win. I, I kind of guarantee it, yeah. You, you guarantee it, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, look, I, I trust uh, Oparin that he found something. Um, and he, in general, he stays quite technical, uh, especially in this type of winning positions. But with the material so limited, you know, uh, there's doubts at times creeping in. Yeah, of course. I think that maybe there was a cleaner way to do it. I, that's that's it, it does feel yes. like it, right? It, it, it does feel like maybe he shouldn't have allowed this queen uh, trade. But okay. We'll let him think uh, on that one, try to figure out his way to a victory. Now, let's take a look at the game between Teodoru and Sam Sevion, who is coming off a difficult loss yesterday. 
I have to say. I mean, this looks terrible for black. Does this it, doesn't it? looks very cramped for black. That is uh, indeed even, even my assessment as well. Even if I just take on B6, right? Yes. I take yes. on B6 and I go like H3 or H4 or Rook D2. Just a normal move. Just yeah. some, some move. Isn't white just like much better here? It, it certainly feels that way. Bear so bishop. Say rook to I'll play D8. But this is the thing. I don't think I need to analyze this move by move. Oh, I, right. I, I'll play rook D2. Run. Rook D2, yeah. Just play it slowly, just, just basically. Just play it slow, like F4, maybe King H2, maybe Rook F D1, maybe H5. Yeah. Depending on what you do. Uh, conceptually, I have to pair bishops and I have a stronger center because you're not going to get B5 in. Yeah. Potentially, uh, you can go D5 whenever you Whenever want. I want, right. You don't have to yeah. hurry with that. Um, so my question is, isn't white just like much superior in this Oh, position? for sure. No, yeah. I, I, I tend to agree with you on this one it just feels like the two bishops now how are we doing on time and this kind of yeah. points to the fact that it was sam sevian who was struggling up to this point because he only mm. has 12 minutes and yeah. 49 seconds right now and his opponent nico mm. has 16 minutes and counting so they're going straight towards that time travel zone yeah unfortunately for sam he was there yesterday as well yeah and then he didn't fare well. No, 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 no. And they have 17 moves to go. It's a lot of moves. He did not take, by the way, on b6 while we were discussing mm. those options. Which is funny because it still obviously remains a wide advantage. Pair of bishops, better center. This is kind of a dream Catalan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and what do you even yeah. play with black? You have to that's, play something like that's, c6. That's a very, very... Uh, and, you know, sometimes I get this type of positions from a Grunfeld perspective. With sad. the pawn on g6, yeah. which is better than this. Because the bishop's on g7. At least you're attacking something, right? Right now, there's no tension against my pawns in the center. And we know that the modern type of chess, uh, you get openings such as the Grunfeld, where you allow white to gain the center, but you attack it from yeah. afar, right? Right now, there is no tension. You're not posing any questions in the center. My pawns are just... Uh, staying there, occupying a lot of squares and a lot of space. I really like white. Let's uh, move on to <laughs> the Battle of Generations. I will call this one the one between Ilyas Mirin and Abhimanyu Mishra. Um, what do we think? I mean, it's white playing for a win, right? Materials even, but this pawn on e4 is definitely the weaker one than uh, the if pawn on the king side. The yeah, king if I get my king to e3, you're basically yeah. lost. It's so. Nice. It really comes down to whether black can prevent this. So whatever happens here, it's a two-result game. Uh, yes. Mishra is playing definitely for the draw. Uh, Smirin, I don't know what happened. Feels like it was some kind of King's Indian. I don't know how we got here. No, it was a <laughs> it was actually an e4, c5, knight, e2. <laughs> I would not have guessed that in a million years. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in fact, that's not the game that we're looking at. Uh, is that Ilias Mirin? I thought that's Zhu Zhanchao. That is Zhu Zhanchao, yes. Uh, I don't think that's Ilya's name. Ilya has a couple more right hairs. <laughs> yes, that, that, that was my impression as well. Um, it was this 92 Sicilian. And the strategy for Ilya, by the way, it was quite obvious from the beginning. Take your young opponent out of the opening. Yeah, these dragon type structures are actually, uh, had they been worked out, <laughs> but it was a while ago. Atelier Turzo actually did a lot of work on this. Atelier Turzo, yes. You remember that name? It's <laughs> yeah. a long time ago, yeah. Atelier Turzo is uh, right now uh, running for the GM title. Uh, shout out to Atelier Turzo. He has uh, this uh, thing where he runs every single day. Does he actually? In preparation for, uh, yeah, I think he's like on day 300 or something. No, like well, no he's, way. He's running every single day. And Wait, what? It's, uh, his mission to become a grandmaster. I didn't uh, know this at all. Yeah, yeah. And he's posting on Twitter. Shout out to Attila Turzo. Yeah, good uh, for him, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he actually did some work on the dragon, um, which is why I was wondering if this was somehow some kind of a dragon position because he did a lot of work, a lot of work on the dragon, but also the side lesson of the dragon, mm -hmm. the Fianchetto dragon and the Levenfish dragon and all this kind of nonsense dragon. With knight d7, knights, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Early knight c6 with a6, yeah. But uh, uh, this one doesn't look particularly fun for black. I mean, on a good day you survive, on a bad day you actually just get killed. And it's not the type of position that you want to have against Ilyas Miri. No. That is also another problem. Yeah, you, 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 you know what the funny thing is, like, 
about these tournaments, you actually do see some of these players as weaker than others. And yeah. when, when you yeah. think about Benjamin Glendura or Yun Yang Yi or like some like a parent, right? Mm -hmm. A parent, mm -hmm. like a candidate almost. Of course, yeah, yeah. It's a player that's fighting to be a candidate. And then they're facing off against like Nicolas Sedor or like <laughs> Ilias Mirren, who are clearly not fighting to be candidates. Right. At least from a rating perspective. From a rating perspective, but you have to understand that these are stre extremely strong players. I mean, Ilias Mirren has won so many Opens. He clearly has a very deep understanding of chess. Has been 2,700 more than once. Yep. And he's kind of showing it, you know. Uh, Young Abimanyu Mishra is at a great event. Uh, not had really any problems in his tournament besides that game against Bier, mm -hmm. which uh, he miraculously drew. But besides that, he's had a great event, a very strong showing, but today I do feel that he got bested. Oh, uh, well, maybe not yet, but he's definitely on the defensive end. And he's on the defensive side, show yeah. That Ilya uh, needed that confidence boost that I he think, got yesterday. I think so, too. Yeah, and uh, I like... Ilya's chances. Let's take a look at the last game, the game that, in fact, we started off the broadcast with, the one between Yu Yang Yi and Hakobian, and <laughs> a lot of things have happened. And look, we started off after Queen to E7, and I said that you have to find a way to release this rook from the defense of the B2 pawn, and this is exactly what he did. To open B3? up the C file. No, he actually played knight way too. Oh, I like this move, actually. Followed by B3. Yeah. Followed by b4. And then that on a2 Quite just interesting. keeps the control. Yeah. And now knight to b3. It's um, knight c5 coming, yeah. a very nice maneuver because the knight on a5 did his job. Yeah. It restricted black's pieces. Now it's time to get it to the better square, the c5 square. Bishop to c8. Currently, this is the position we have. What I'm looking at, it's 10 moves to go before the time situation uh, changes. And unfortunately for Hakobian, he only has 7 minutes and 35 seconds It's left. not a lot of time. Such a difficult position also. It, it is pretty unpleasant because the only way to really release the tension is knight takes c5 and it's a move that you dread to play. Oh, I mean, yeah. You just yeah. dread to no, play it. No, no, no. So wh what is wrong with like knight d6? Do you actually take one d6? Well, it's white to move right now because oh, bishop to c8 was the last move. Um, what if I just take on a6? With what? With the knight. If you take with a bishop, unfortunately, that doesn't work because I do take on c5 and uh, that comes with the tempo. Yeah, and then you take with the rook on a6. Yes. But what if I take with the knight? That is a good question. Um, it is a pawn after all. It's not such a bad pawn either. It, it's you probably have to the take. one of the best pawns, right? Because yeah, they're the b pawn. Yeah, you have to take because otherwise rook takes c8. It becomes so you take, a passer. Um, Take, take, rook to a8 is going to be met by b5. But if you don't play rook a8... I mean, you have to play rook a8, b5, knight d6, and hope that knight takes uh, on b5 next move or for some time. maybe knight b8? Works. No, but knight b8, knight to b4. Yeah, knight b8, knight b4 doesn't really help you. So knight d6, yes, I like this idea. But even rook here, rook c7, rook c6 also good, yeah. Hanging on by a thread, I have to say. For black. Yes. If anything. I'm not sure that you're hanging on to anything here after rook c6, to be honest. Yeah, rook to c6, rook to c7 is also an option. Um, actually, perhaps rook c7 does allow this unpleasant uh, tactic, little tactic that uh, black has in store. And even this. Even this, <laughs> take, 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 and you have to still calculate. But yeah, you have, you have to defend yeah. this. You, you, you're getting your own counter chances. Um, bishop to c8. Big moment right now. You can take a pawn as white. Will you take it? Or will he try to find a quieter path towards an advantage? Um, what do we think, Alejandro? What do oh, by the way, and um, what about this idea? Just simply playing queen to a5. Yeah, that's, that's also the thing. Right? You can play it slow. You can play queen a3, yeah. you can play queen a5. Yeah. Yeah. You can I play knight c3, knight a4. And this is uh, actually a big threat right now because the bishop on c8 is. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie, Christian. The more I see this position, the more I hate it for black. It's it's ugly. It's actually pretty ugly, yeah. It's ugly, and I can guarantee you, Yu Yang Yi right now is having a lot of fun. And he's having a blast with tw with 20 minutes. Yeah. For 10 minutes to go and seven minutes for his opponent. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think so. And he made the move. He did not. Actually, he did take on a6, didn't he? 
I'm a little surprised about it. No, he no. played queen a3. Queen a3, okay. Still, Perhaps the same idea, right? 90, well, knight a4 just wins, so he needs to defend against that. Uh, knight d6 seems like the right move. You've been trying to get that knight out of e8 for a very long time. It's yeah. finally time to do so. Um, and, ah, okay, okay, so now <laughs> this is the, such a crafty move. Such a crafty move, because now you can go knight to a And rook b7, you have bishop a6. And the queen is not on a5, so that you can uh, pin it with rook to a6. I love it! I love it! It's the tactical details that work out for white. Queen on a3 is actually a better place than the queen on a5, yeah. because of the lack of a pin. So rook a7 just absolutely gets loses destroyed. Loses piece, yeah. actually. Yeah, just... just yeah, loses. So the only thing that I can think of after knight to a4 is what if you start off with knight to b5, but then I can just simply go queen to b2. You have too many pieces on your threat. It's done. This is over. It's over. What a move. Queen to a3. Queen a3. That, that's why he's an Olympic gold medalist. That, I mean, Yu Yang Yi playing amazing chess here. Queen a3 is a great move. No. Uh, a I great mean, if you're second on c5, you'd rather resign. You, you, you might be forced at this point. Gross. You might but be forced. The only good thing about taking on c5 right now is that you have to take with the d pawn and not with the b pawn because you take with the b pawn at rook b3. Exactly. Yeah. Very nice spot there. Um, so you do have to take either with the rook or the. That being said, you take with the d pawn. It's, it's pretty winning. Yeah. So rook to c6, and now I just have to find b5. b5 is enough. Just go b5. Don't even think about it. B4, right? Yeah. Somehow this will win somehow. No, you're very it doesn't, it confident. Doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> this will win somehow. Somehow it will win. Somehow it will win. It, it, it's also such a sad position because the knight no longer has this d6. d6 yeah. The bishop, whenever he goes either to uh, b7 or d7, is going to be met by c6. And in the meantime, I can just get ready to perhaps take the pawn on b5 with queen to a5. Um, yeah, no, it, it, it just looks great for, uh, for a white. We'll leave it at that. Let's move on just to check what's happening. And as you can see on Aram's face, he's not very yeah, happy. Yeah, he's not very happy. He knows that knight takes c5 from a practical perspective is just like lost. Game. Yeah, but what else can he do? Game over. And uh, yeah, he doesn't have any other options. All right, we'll leave these players to think. Let's get back to the B group game of the day, the one between John Burke and Misha Antipov, because in fact, a lot of things have happened. Knight to f8 was played where we left it off. Rook to g1, the plan that we were discussing. Knight to g6, queen to f3, knight to f4, and now we have g5. Um, and the players did go into this variation quite quickly. Take on f5, take on f5, and queen to d5. Now, at least from black's perspective, you're exchanging the queens, and perhaps you are not going to get checkmated because of that. Um, that's, that's a good sign. On the other hand, the attack is still coming against right. your king. So what if I just take on d5? What if I start with taking on f6, actually? You want to take on f6 first. Oh. Huh. I'm just curious. Sure. So let's say... Let's say I take on... I'm curious. No, I take you on know what? I'll take on f3 first, and then I'll take on f6. And then I'll take on f4. And then... How do we feel about this? Rook g6 is coming, but you have to take c3. I'm not c3. impressed by this bishop. I'm not impressed by that bishop either. I think it's a big, very big liability. I still feel after rook g6, I have a bit of a pull. I, 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 I agree with that. I mean, just white species are better placed. White species are more active, right? White species actually have yeah. a job in the position. They have targets. They have targets, exactly. Um, queen takes d5 is what John Burke decided to start with. And as we were discussing, it does feel like you're almost forced right now to take back with the rook, which is not necessarily a move that you want to make. Um, and he did. Now, why not with the knight, which seems much more natural, because I can take, take, rook to eight, g6, creating an immediate threat. And now we get this position, the same position we had previously, but with an extra option, a deadly option, I might add, yeah. for white. Knight to g4. Yeah, that finishes the game. That's uh, a big threat. Not only that, but knight, uh, rook takes h6, 
is a big threat as well, yeah. which might actually lead to some sort of a check on this. Yeah, Rook takes Rook G1. You start, you start wondering how Black is ever going to survive this, right? Uh, he's not. He's not. He, he's not surviving <laughs> this. So. Spoiler, he's not. That's why he took on D5 with the Rook. Uh, and another concerning factor for young Misha Antipov is the fact that he has 6 minutes and 23 seconds against 13 minutes and still 12 moves to go. It's a lot of moves. Uh, he's actually just played the move. Um, yeah, Rook takes D5 is on the board. And I don't think we currently have a move by John. He's uh, definitely pondering his options, trying to find a way to break through. And that, that is, is another game. game. This is a Yu Yang Yi against Hakobian game. Uh, do you go C4 ever? Uh, difficult to say. Difficult to say. Yeah. It kills your bishop on C2, but it is a tempo. It is a tempo, but what else outside of that tempo? I do go back to D7. Maybe not that much, eh? No, no, no. I think it's one of those moves that's more tempting than it is good. Right. And I, I understand what you want to do with this move, yeah. C4, right? Because whenever you, you take on F4, yeah. this rook coming to F5, you don't want that. Right? Exactly. You don't want this rook to activate when I take on F4. And taking on F4 is a crucial part of White's decisions. To that on F4 is very annoying. It covers a lot of important light squares, which are the main weaknesses of Black's position. You want G6 access, you want E6 access. So you want a lot of these squares to be weak and you want to take on F4, but I don't want to do it in a situation where the rook on D5 is attacking F5. Exactly, uh, that was the th thought process that uh, John had as well. And instead of kicking the rook with the move C4, he decided to kick it with the move bishop to B3, which makes a lot of sense. Because not only that you're kicking the rook away, you're also activating probably your most passive piece in the position, the bishop on C2. Okay, no, no, no. Not only that you're activating it, but I have a feeling that this bishop is coming uh, into the attack quite Yeah, what, what, what can you do? You can, I mean, yeah, Where can do you, you have to play rook, rook d7? But rook to d7, I don't know. That This is a weakness right now. So I'm going to take, take, take. You have to take. You probably have to take, and now rook to g6. How, how do we feel about this? I feel like white is in a great position. Amazing. He's actually played the move rook d6, maybe. Yeah. That's Planning on that because the rook on d6 at least holds on to the f6 uh, pawn for one move. And perhaps he wants to, if you take on h6, take back with the king. We don't know whether that works uh, or not. We will look at it in just a second. It might and be. If you do take on f6, take back with the rook. Keep the pawn on g7. Maybe this is the way he's uh, trying to defend this. Visually, I'm feeling uh, with w the white pieces that I'm one target away from putting you in a completely losing position. I don't yeah, see it yet. Uh, but I know what you mean. Like a bishop gets to e4 and I gets to e4. Something, something important gets to a good square. And you have so many weaknesses e4, as e6, black, G6. right? You, you've weaknessed, you weaknessed uh, e6, the g file, g6, e4. Uh, there's a lot of problems with your position in general. And the only real compensation that you have is a knight on f4 and yep. uh, maybe the possibility to take on c3. Take on so c3 and open up the d file. Open the d file. So if this somehow goes away, I can imagine the white is completely winning. But yeah. perhaps dynamically, black still holds a shot of chance. Somehow, somehow in the game. And by the way, we do mm -hmm. have uh, a result. Uh, the game between Vasquez and Zhu Zhanqiao finished in a draw. And let's not forget, Vasquez is uh, one of uh, the leaders going into today's round. But it's not enough. You remember that he actually needs to uh, win to catch up to JJ Alimonrande. He did not. So right now, as we enter the championship round, it will be JJ Alimarandi who goes on with half a point lead over his nearest competitor. That's and right. that is uh, Guillermo Vasquez. He did win that game by forfeit against Brandon Jacobson. Uh, that's going to put him on, if I'm not mistaken, five and a half out of eight. And uh, Vasquez might be somewhere around five out of eight. Uh, quite a respectable result. Now, G takes H6, G takes H6. So we were discussing the opportunity potential to uh, take on H6 with the king. He did not, took with the pawn, and that creates a weakness. And the king cut on, oh man, it, it looks so scary right now. Right, but I mean, black does have a couple of uh, threats. Uh, somehow, knight takes the three is a real threat. Yes. Even though it looks uh, loose. You can, actually, you could stop him with rook g6. Unfortunately, that knight will pick up 
the rock, the rock. You, know, you, yeah. you can't actually do that. And that's the thing, you have to take on F4 first, right? Yeah, but if you take on F4 and you take on F4 and you go rook G6, you know how an immediate threat, knight E5, actually it looks extremely annoying. Mm. Uh, you cannot sacrifice this no. rook, like the move rook G1 just does not work. No, because the king mm -hmm. nicely hides on G7. G7. Yeah. Don't go to H8 because this uh, beautiful bishop actually has a tremendous task right now. Uh, but the blockading king on G7, in fact, just kills white's position. G takes H6. Well, let's try to find the path forward for John Burke. We, we, we hyped his position so much. We do think that he's in a tremendous shape right now. Uh, but where's the killing blow? How about like bishop f7? Yes. Very and now collection. I do the check. Now you want to go here, right? So you're saying that if I do take and take and king to and g7... And then here I go knight g4. Now and I take advantage g4. of the fact that your rook is somehow on f8 and bishop h6 is a huge threat. And I cannot defend with this move because now this pawn... Promotes. Promotes. Well, you it can costs, defend, It costs you a piece, but, but um, that's more than enough. I mean, basically, not the exchange. Yes, absolutely. More than enough. Yeah. Um, that might be it. Bishop to f7. Tremendous move, indeed. So let's try to defend. So you go rook to f8, and now I go king to h7. And by the way, while we are watching this game, another game from the B group has finished. That is the game between Cheka and Kamil Dragun, it ended in a draw. What if I go king to h8? You're going to continue, I assume, right? I guess so, yeah. Why not? It, m the main question is why not, right? Finally, I put, let's I put a little try bit of pressure uh, as they with the pawn. Yes, and let's pick up some pawns of my own. Oh, never mind. But the, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good morning, St. Louis. That knight yeah, that's also it. goes backwards. That's defended, <laughs> and I was trying to figure out if you can make knight takes d3 work, but so I couldn't. let's get rook takes d3. Yeah, but here I thought bishop takes was pretty strong. Bishop takes. Take. You have to take. Do I? Yeah. What else can you do? I could take here and then yeah, take but on h4, g but then you, you have king g3 at the end. Also, you have bishop to h2. Yeah. Uh, so I do have to take. Indeed, I take on d1. I would assume you take back. I take. And then here rook d7, yeah? Rook to d7, you're going in. You actually have a checkmating threat. Yeah, you have to go something to d7. So if I go here, just to showcase the checkmate, uh, that's every single piece is nicely, harmoniously working with each other to deliver the checkmate. Um, so knight to e7, right? I think so. And how do we feel about this position? I feel it's dangerous for black. But how dangerous? It's a different question, right? Because king g7, I could just go back and then go h5 next move. h5, h6, you're bringing another attacker into the game. It looks very bad for black, honestly. It does. I, I, I mean, I could take on c7 whenever I feel like it, and h5, h6 is a very real threat. Um, I can't yeah. be worse as white. Yeah, bishop d6. I, I just cannot be worse as white. Bishop d6 is a move, uh, and very good point. You can definitely not be worse with white. Um, even though, by the way, I'm, I'm looking at this position, and even this, what if I go rook h8? So you go h5, I go rook h8. Uh, move? No. King g2, whatever. King h, g2, h6 right? maybe. h6 I, I would take, and, and this was my question. How bad is this? It, it just feels like I have some sort of a blockade almost. Yeah, it's very close, right? This bishop on e5 would just hold on to all the pawns. Yes. So, yeah, you might be right about that. Maybe I have to be a little bit more clever. Uh, going back a couple moves. Mm -hmm. Here, not, maybe yeah, 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 king g2. Maybe king g2 yeah. yeah, this is uh, much more of a problem. Because you are more uh, more zugzwang, if you put it that way. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely much yeah. more of an issue. No, no, it, it's not looking great uh, for Misha Antipov. Let's move back because we are analyzing these games quite extensively. Um, let's move back to the A group right now. Okay. And let's see. By the way, do we have any more moves after Queen to A3 mm -hmm. in the game of the round in Group A? The one between Yu Yang Yi and uh, Aram Hakobian. Knight to D6 was played. Was that, was that actually the move? And Knight to A4? Wait, the thing is like... What's happening here, Alejandro? Yes, Bishop, are they following? No, they're not following. Where are they? 
Ah, he played rook to c6. Not bishop a6, but he did not rook take a7? Why didn't he take? Perhaps rook a7, and he just didn't like this because... Because of what? <laughs> because takes, 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 knight b6 at the end? Maybe. Yeah, it must be, right? What, what else could it be? A knight to b6, and he's saying that he actually doesn't have that much here. It might be true. I mean, you're taking on a4 and queen a7. Pawn on b4 is pretty weak. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So he decided to keep uh, the uh, control of the position with the move rook to c6. Yeah, b5 is a threat, right? b5 is a big threat opening up and creating the spin on the a3 fa diagonal. Uh, rook to a7, queen to b2, knight to f6, and knight to c5. And we're down to Aram's last three minutes. Mm -hmm. And 12 minutes for Yu Yang Yi. Now, do we have any media threats? For I right? don't see any media threat, but it's clear who's playing for a win, right? Yeah. Even the move queen a3 here looks uh, annoying. Yes, queen a3 is definitely a threat. But um, what is black's threat? Do I have something like bishop d7 coming? Uh, be, meanwhile, we actually completely missed this game, but... Uh, Theodore yeah, Hadotinian... How did we miss that game? <laughs> who, Theodore Hadotinian, who has had a really rough event so far, Finally gets a full point win. Yes. He beats Christopher Yu, who honestly also has not had a great, a great not event. Not a great event, yeah. And not yeah, uh, the, the last 10 or 15 games of this. I don't think Christopher got any victories either. I think only his uh, bye. Against Brandon Jacobson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And th did he even get that? Because yeah, he got that. He got that yesterday. He got it, right. I think right. so. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, because... Yeah. Uh, I think Brandon, who is Brandon playing against tomorrow? That's a good question. I, I, <laughs> that's too much information uh, needed from the commentators at this hour. Now, because let's take a look at the John Burke game. Yeah, uh, John Burke against Antipov has actually exploded. Oh, we were going straight into the variation we discussed. Right, but the G, um, the G file is wide open. Yes, that's exactly what we talked about. And Bishop G6 here? We said king rook to f8. Right? Yeah, we thought we, we, we thought about rook f8 because you could hold on to the h6 pawn here. Like if you go down that file. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but you cannot. Ah, yeah, you cannot. You cannot because of g7. Yeah, we've we, we, we've had we, this. We've had, we've had this. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So rook to e7. Now this allows the extra check on g8, but that doesn't do much. And then g4 doesn't actually win anything. Probably not. Knight takes e5. And I don't even have to do that, right? I think I can... Uh, even though you do threaten to take... Uh, I do threaten a couple of pawns, right? Knight e5. So this is a serious consideration, actually. Rook to g7. Now you take... Let's say you take, 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 and we get this position. But you can take, take, and bishop f2. So Correct. Probably not better for white. Yeah, and uh, by the way, he did go for bishop to g6, king to h8, immediately responded. And remember when uh, it was John that had three times as much time as Misha, right. 15 minutes against five minutes. Right now, they're both of them under five minutes, mm -hmm. soon to be. Soon to be for John Burke, five minutes and 15 seconds and counting, five minutes and four seconds for Misha and people. Um, so he played his last moves Quickly. Quickly. And that's important for the, actually for the position, right? Yeah. It's only eight minutes and it's incredibly complicated because even though there are no immediate tactics, the change of the structure could be so crucial, right? Do you want to take on F4? Do you want not take on F4? There's uh, decisions at yeah. every corner. The decisions are tough. So let's, since uh, we have I, the luxury I, of I, I think of I would start with moves. C4. I think I would start with C4 only because you never really want to take on uh, you really G6. Like this move C4. I really don't know if you want to take on D3. But what if I take? And then I go Knight G4. I, I get it. So if you take, you, you, that's two, yeah. not possible. Probably because Knight takes F2 and Knight takes D1. But you do have this extra move, Knight G4. I have Knight G4. I was kind of hoping that Bishop H6 is such a big threat that you would be disillusioned in playing this. And I might be right. I go back. I mean, you could also no, take actually, on B2, actually. Take on B2. I mean, it's the extremely <laughs> ambitious <laughs> move, yeah? <laughs> so Extremely greedy. ambitious, extremely greedy, but All right, let's, sometimes that's let's how chess here. works. Let's go here. Let's Knight takes C4. You can take another one. I get it. Now, finally, I get this pawn. 
you've been hyping this pawn on h6 quite a lot, so I trust you, Alejandro. I mean, bishop one. f8 is a threat. That's it's a big threat. That's a big threat. Um, None of this would happen, by the way. I don't know, man. Knight g4 was played. He did take on f4 first. He did take knight on f4 and knight g4. And yeah. knight to g4, yeah. So I no more knight d3. What do we have here? What do we have here? How? Knight takes h6 is indeed coming. Uh, but at the same time, what if I go this move? Which move? King to g7. Defending. One of the ways of defending this pawn on h6. Yeah, it's a pretty annoying position for white because even though you have two uh, pieces on the g file that you think you can make a great discovery with, not so clear, right? Because once I put this knight on e5, I will have all my pieces on the dark squares. Yeah. So good luck finding a discovery check that does anything to me. Good luck because it, it looks very scary, but I don't see a refutation. No. I don't see reputation at all. He made a move. Oh, by the way, H? he did H5? Are you kidding me? Wait, 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 wait. But we do have to understand why not king to g A symbol. Doesn't matter. Let's go h5. King to g7. Let's go, baby. h5. h5 is on the board. If bishop h5, I assume rook h7 wins? Question mark. h5. What a move. Yeah, but rook h7 is actually a huge move, right? Because... If you move the bishop anywhere, rook h4, you have to play knight f2, which is extremely sad. Yeah, this is sad. And then anything, right? Knight e5, knight f3, or take some bishop f2. Doesn't matter at this point. h5! Did he miss this move? Could have been. What happens if I go knight h6? King g7, and where is your knight going? That is the point, I think. The knight doesn't have anywhere to go. I understand, you have discovery checks. That's crazy. What a great... But do you have... Uh, okay, so... I don't see check. it. Check. King h6. I think that's it, because knight e5 comes next move. Knight e5 covers everything. Yeah, knight e5 was a huge move. Oh, and he played knight h2. <laughs> did he, he did not even think of uh, taking any of uh, the routes we propose. Knight to h2. The easy way out. The only other way out. So what if I take, take, and bishop takes f2? That's a very good question. So you take, take, you take on f2. Now it's starting to feel like black is getting back into the game. At least. Right, and he's actually taken on c3. As, if, as expected. And immediately responded and take on f2. They're following uh, this variation. And they're going straight into the second time control. They're playing fast. Now only four moves left. Yeah, I don't think rook e2, rook f1 is a huge difference. Maybe rook f1 you can take on f4. So rook two, okay. Let's let's see. Let's let's wait for him because I think he will make a decision quite quickly. And we have a lot of games left, right? We do, we do, we do. So, um, in fact, in fact, this is the, this only, is the game only game in the big group, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because the Harut Union uh, game finished in a victory for White. Um, but in the A group, one game that... Oh Every game God. is going on in the A my group. Goodness. Oh my God. What is Check there? this one. This is the game between this must be over, yeah. and uh, yeah, this Pierre, is over. and this is over. It is over. I That's don't know how he took all the pawns, but this one is actually over right now. That he resigned. He literally resigned. He Oparin, resigned. with a great victory, he had a very mediocre tournament. There is no way in the chess world that Oparin should ever have minus one in one of these tournaments. He's such a strong player, so studious, so resourceful, so strong. And yeah. getting to 50%, it just feels, it feels like a little bit of the tournament was rectified. Bit of a relief. A little bit of relief yeah. for him as well. Jonas Bier, they're definitely a strong player, but Oparin is Oparin and he really showed his class today, uh, grinding Bier down. So Bier is currently on 50%, as is Oparin. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and let's move on to see what is happening in the game between Ilya and Mishra. This one seems uh, like still Ilya is trying to grind down the young, young Mishra. And he seems to be well on his way to doing so because he's bishop to h3 followed by bishop to g2. And then that's going to force the king to go to f5. Will that be enough 
for black to hold is the question. Did he find the blockade? Man, that's tough to believe in eh? or like one tempo away from being zoog zoog. It's some sort of a <laughs> some sort of a blockade, but we know players that don't believe in blockades. <laughs> Never believe in fortresses. It's different. Yeah. Fortresses. Yeah. But okay, let's let's say that I maneuver my bishop to g two. Sure. And how do you defend? King f five. I go bishop e seven. Oh, you're you're bishop threatening before. a checkmate. But you have bishop before you. So I can give you a check, yeah. King e2. But now this is, I can even go back. No, but not before he's hanging. Ah, so before he's hanging. Before he's hanging is you my point. You have to defend. Okay, what if I... That's not a good move. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good move. <laughs> that would be a nice uh, finish to the uh, to the game. King to e6. And you already lose, yeah. So let's give a check. It really doesn't matter. I just keep moving my king, king d1. Perfect, king to e1. And as uh, we are analyzing this, we will be getting a Grigory Oparin in just a second to give us his uh, first interview of uh, this ah, tournament. This he, he came here before. No. No? No, he hasn't been here before. It's, Incredible. Uh, it will How be his first not time. Have such a great player like Ek Grigory yeah. Oparin here in the studio before. Yeah, yeah, no, it's the first time and he uh, actually told me yesterday, um, I will see you tomorrow. Oh. In the interview booth, yeah. He was so confident. I like he, that confidence. He indeed delivered today. All right, so as we are getting ready for that one, we're trying to understand what's happening in uh, this battle between Yu Yang Yi and Aram Hakobian. Definitely the key game of Group A, and it does feel like Yu Yang Yi is slowly, slowly picking apart his opponent. Knight to a4 potentially will come on the board, followed by knight to c5. It does seem like black is extremely cramped right now, but while we uh, wait for these players to uh, understand the position, assess it, and deliver their moves, we do have uh, Grigory Oparin in the studio with us. Welcome to the studio, Grigory. First time uh, here in round number eight. Alejandro couldn't believe it. How does it feel uh, to finally win your first game? Uh, well, thank you. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit too late. Yeah, I would prefer coming here like uh, after the first round, probably. But yeah, I mean, I think I won a pretty nice game, so I'm very happy with that. How did you approach today's uh, game? You're playing against uh, a player that we haven't seen that often here in St. Louis. I would assume this is the first time you are meeting him over the chessboard. How did you feel about him as a player and what was the strategy that you employed for this one? I basically just wanted to play for him at any cost with white, even taking strategic risks. Uh, uh, so my opening choice was like determined by that mood. So I went for a, quite a risky line with a3. This uh, <laughs> interesting idea early on in the Nimzo with a3. Tell us a bit about this. What are the strategic risks that you are mentioning? Well, obviously, the, the pawn structure white gets here is uh, not ideal to put it uh, this way, but at the same time, like white has a, a lot of points in, in the center. So, I mean, there are three, just, four. There are just uh, many, many ideas, uh, and I was quite surprised by this C takes D four. I'm not even sure if I looked at it <laughs> because, like, I I myself played D six here with black against V two golf. So that was probably my like the main move I considered during my preparation, but even b6 instead of d6 is like a valuable, like a valid move because, for example, it's very hard to believe, but after d5, knight a5, e5, we can just play knight g8 and like somehow like even here it's like almost impossible to get anything with one. If you have some ideas of knight takes c4 immediately. Yeah, yeah like, like you can go h4. f4 with white, but it's just absolutely crazy. Yeah. Some uh, crazy lines. Unbelievable, but black holds even here. <laughs> Uh, was he surprised uh, at this point in the game? Did you feel like you surprised him with this move a3? I'm not sure he played c takes d4 very confidently. Quite quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and d5, followed d5. by d5. I, I see think that. my my reply was very logical, so I wasn't very sure like what was his idea, his idea here. Knight to g8. Knight g8. And, and still he was on one hour and twenty nine minutes. So yeah. He was yeah. Fast. He was playing fast, but it. Uh, 
cloud that uh, it's very easy to play for me actually like bp3 just develop and black still needs to prove something yeah i did not i did not like queen b6 at all because it just feels like black is wasting too much time taking that pawn on a3 which is not that useful because like my play is always on the ki on the king side yeah mm -hmm. like and try to get the pieces yeah. out also it's kind of difficult for him to finish his development without giving you back the pawn um, which actually happened in the game he played this move bishop f5 quite uh, quickly giving back the pawn um, yeah, rook to b3, b3. rook takes b7 yeah, and, uh, at this point i felt like i have a very huge advantage in mostly because my rook on b7 is so active i'm creating some direct threats immediately and uh, yeah maybe he has to go f6 because i just couldn't find any other move for him yep it does feel like f6 and after f6 his king is just so weak like, mm, i always have some ideas against uh, against it uh, i just need to unpin the knight on e2 basically bring the rook from h1 into the game and yeah it will just be over i think bishop 4 is an important move because i'm controlling the b8 square so he cannot exchange uh, the rooks for example after bishop h6 i think it wouldn't be so clear because he can play rook b8 mm -hmm. and i might just not have enough resources here mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah after bishop f4 i don't know maybe he can hold somehow but just from a practical point of view just very very difficult exactly yeah with such a weak king uh and uh, your only counter chance is black probably will be tied to uh the advancement of the a pawn but unfortunately that's a bit slow um yeah. rook to e8 rook to e1 and we got to this yeah there position. was some funny stuff like yes. rook e8 rook f1 uh like if he takes on d4 yeah like take a pawn it's sure. very risky but i think bishop b1 just wins on this board <laughs> kind of nice, nasty yeah that's nice so if you take, maybe take something on d4, else wins as well but yeah Get just the king. just collapses com completely here. You have to defend this bishop. Yeah. Queen comes to f6. Yeah, and it, it all comes down to the weakness of uh, the black king, which is just uh, a consistent weakness. It, you're, you're never getting better. Um, bishop takes d3 came on the board, and we have this position. And at this point, we got to this position. This is where we started looking at it, actually. Yeah. Um, and we were considering other moves such as potentially defending the knight with rook to e1 but you just simply took on g6 quite yeah i quickly. think i just calculated till the end like that it's winning for me because i'm just getting two connected po pawns uh, because i'm always winning the f6 so you saw that you're going to pick up the pawn on f6 yeah. and you are sure that even if you lose h7 with the two connected passers that's going to be winning yeah even if like somehow black black's d5 pawn survives even even then f and G would be completely winning for me. Yeah, so. yeah. But I mean, maybe something else was completely winning instead of uh, eight takes G six. But this just seemed like a very practical approach. Just yeah, no need to calculate anything and just yeah, very easy to play. And this pawn on H seven still keeps uh, the rook uh, prisoner on the eighth rank because anytime you move it away, you're gonna get checkmated. it. So yeah, quite a smooth well, victory. There was uh, some little one little yes. trick in the end, like yes. instead of group D D seven, like. I wanted to play king g3 immediately, but then he can go rook h1. Uh -huh. Let's say rook d3, rook h7, rook takes f6, rook g8, king f2, rook h2, and uh, somehow Ooh. I'm losing the pawn. <laughs> you lose the pawn and you actually don't have a way to defend it. Yeah, that was a funny little line. Yeah, there. this is probably going to be a draw, um, with good play at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, you dodged uh, that bullet definitely smoothly with a move rook to d7. Nice victory for you. Who do you have in the last round? Uh, Benjamin Glidor is black. Big event, uh, big game for you against a peer in the collegiate scene as uh, well. Good luck. We're looking forward to see you tomorrow. Thank you. Grigory Oparin with his first victory of the Summer Chess Classic, which puts him at 50% going into the championship round. Big victory for the young player from the University of Missouri. And we still have a big game going on. That one between Yu Yang Yi, the leader of this event, and Aram Hakobian. This is the game that we have our eyes peeled on uh, because... Uh, I have to say, I, I really love the way in which Yu Yang Yi is pressuring his uh, young opponent. Yeah, this looks pretty terrible. Tactics don't work out for the black side. You would like to think about the move rook takes b5, but it doesn't actually work out because after rook takes b5, 
Uh, you're actually hitting the rook on b8, which means uh, you don't have to move queen takes c6. Yes. Uh, it, it's all kind of tactics and important tactics, but they work out. Uh, this allows white to improve its position because queen c4 is coming with such a strong idea. Uh, queen c4 or queen so c2. So let's discuss this. Let's see what happens if I try to use this pawn as a decoy. And I think you need to. I think that's, uh, it's time. Yeah. Yeah, because as you were mentioning, if you do get the queen to c4 and the pawn is not already on a4, a4 I don't think then you don't anymore, have a4 yeah. anymore. You don't have any 4 yeah. Now, this is the move, and by the way, he played it. You have, you have to play it, yeah, you have yeah. to play a4. Hope that you can actually exchange the a pawn. For uh, the b pawn. Yeah, for the b pawn. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the, the decoy that we are discussing. And for example, just to showcase uh, the idea is that if you do go queen takes a2, rook takes b5, this is kind of an ideal scenario for black. Where even if you manage to somehow take the pawn on e4, I have a feeling that you're quite close to equality. Mm, uh, equality is not what I would call it, but it would be closer to a draw. To like, a draw, yes. You would be able to suffer for a long time and make the draw. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So a4 on the board, mm, I have to say, um, I think it looked better a few moves ago for white. Something happened, and the material got a bit limited. It really depends on the following move, right? If you don't have something, something creative, that takes something the pawn on a4 while at the same time preserving the pawn on b5. Right, because I have a move like queen b2, for example, but you do play a3, a3. I think, right? Keep and, uh, using that as a decoy. And yeah. I don't see. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't uh, see what, it. what if I start with the move d5, out of curiosity? d5. Oh, I see. I don't care about the pawns, I care about the quality of the sure. pawns. Sure. Let's stake it. Right? Let's stake it. Move queen b2. It is a check now. I just don't see a clear follow-up here. I feel I'm missing one rook for being in a proper spot to sacrifice anything, right? And this pawn is still dangerous. Yeah, the pawn on a3 is still coming and simplifying. I don't see it. I don't quite see it. Um, A4 on the board, right? Mm -hmm. A4 yeah. is on the board. It's Black is position. very, very close to equalizing this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and what a save that would be for Aram Hakobian. Right. Uh, he's been under pressure, tremendous pressure, I might add, yeah. uh, for the whole game. Um, big moment right now. We'll see if uh, Yu Yang Yi manages to come up with something. Do we still have any games left in the B group? The B group only has one game left. One game? Okay. Yeah, it's the Burke against the Tipov game. This game, the game of the round. Which has, it keeps heating up. Every time we look at it, it's, it's, it's changed dynamics. <laughs> Oh, so they just made prime control. With yeah, this but last move knight to c4. But knight c4 taking advantage of the fact that both d1 is spinned and e4 is hanging, and the knight is coming to e3. What a move! That's a great move. But uh, isn't black just up a pawn? Black is up a pawn. Yes, a double pawn for that matter. But, but a pawn is a pawn. A pawn? No, not just a pawn. Yeah, it's a great pawn. Uh, Rook to c1 was. Pretty. What if I play knight e3 here? Knight to e3, that yeah. forces the rook to move to e2 most Something likely. Something like that, and I go rook h7. Rook to h7. I'm almost forcing you to go to king g1. Yes. And then I go rook d7. You're trying to bring the other rook. And bring the other rook to the attack. Oh man, you're actually trying to checkmate I'm actually me. trying to checkmate <laughs> you, and the, th the funny thing is, it's not so easy to prevent. No. no. <laughs> I mean, this is, is a very, this is a very strong attack. The rook on c1 is pretty useless, and it is opposite color bishops, which tends to favor the initiative. Yes. So let's go knight to f. I can even go rook g7. You probably should go rook g7. I don't. I think you're just lost. So where's the mate? Now, for example, what if I take here? Now you just simply take. I right? just take and go bishop and f2. Go bishop yeah. f2. Oh, this is such a sad position. The rook yeah, on c1 terrible. is useless. It's completely useless. So rook c1, I'm, what if knight e3? I'm, I'm very serious. Knight e3, rook, you have to play rook oh, e2. Th th this might just be a very just bad position be, right now. For it just might be over, right? Might just be over. And what, an, uh, what a sequence of important uh, victories for Misha and Tipo. Uh, yeah. Those would be with the black pieces. Series of results. Drawing against Georgia and Chao from a minus oh, seven position. And then winning. Yeah. And then winning again. Yeah, I mean, what a, what is the use of results for Antipov, who's honestly had such a uh, a disappointing tournament? Oh yeah, a player that participated in the A group on the Spring Classic was relegated to the B group and now is making a bounce back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hell of a bounce back, I have to say, Christian, because it's not just 
his rating and the tournament, it's the way the tournament was held. Yes. You know, he was in so many problems in so many games. Oh, he yeah. survived all of them. But all that's of them. how it goes sometimes. Right? Yeah, you yeah, get yeah. lucky yeah. in some of these games, you manage to survive these miraculous positions, and then the karma somehow works in your favor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I always found that the winner of a tournament is the one that gets lucky in the first round. <laughs> Interesting. That's a, an interesting insight. Yes. Uh, all right. So root to c1, knight to e3 is the move that we are expecting right now from Mishan Tipov. And yeah, that might just close might the, just show. the game, right? By the way, I do see a yeah, knight e3 played and dark piece on e3. So it, it is knight e3. Right? I, I mean, I, I have the rook to b2. Okay, okay, okay. So he's trying to. He's trying to escape. Take but okay, you play rook h7. Steps. How does this help you? That's a rook h7 is running as knight g4. So you have to play king g1. What else can you play? Forces king but, g1. But rook d7, I think, is just completely winning. So I understand why he put this rook on b2 and not on e2. Potentially, he's um, hoping that at some point he's going to be able to get this king to e2. Um, not that that's going to help too much. I just don't see the move after rook gd7. Um, yeah. Rook g7 is coming with such a strong move. Yeah, that's huge threat. It looks over, no? Um, outside of knight to f1 to prepare this... Uh, but knight f1 is doesn't help you. Knight f1, I just go rook g7. That's the thing. That's the thing. And it's the same position. The same position. You take on e3, I'll be happy to go into this kind of endgame. Because Bishop f2 have... is winning. Like, it's just... You, you don't hold on. No. You just don't hold on. No. Like, no. for example, King F4 is not playable. No. Well, it is, actually. Maybe this is the move. Taking advantage of the fact that there's no rook h Yeah, but bishop, bishop F2. Bishop F2, and now I and have rook H2. Then you go rook H2, reinforcing the threat. Yeah, you can go to F3, because you go rook G3. But now I go this move. Yeah. And even here, after take, take rook G1, I think you're lost. Yes. I mean, no, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to survive. I'm trying to, to, to make... To, s to see the next day. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I get what you're saying. That you're b you're barely holding holding on, right? Trying to see the light of, uh, yeah, the next day. Rook to e1, king to f3, and no, we still play. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm not forced to resign immediately. Um, and this is why he put the rook on b2. At least we understand why the rook is on b2 and not not on b2. not yeah not e2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it, it does look one move away from a victory for black. Nevertheless, there is still a technical task at hand. Um, we're going to have to wait and see whether Misha Antipo finds the right way. What do we still have in the A group, Alejandro? Well, the A group is the fun group today. Uh, we already had a power bid against uh, Jonas Bier, an incredibly important game for the standings because Jonas was running away with it a little bit over Oparin. Oparin oh, had yeah. a ter terrible tournament. Jonas had a great tournament. It's kind of equalized things a little bit. I agree. Uh, Theodore is playing against Sevi, and we actually should probably go to that. Uh, if I count correctly, uh, Theodore is up two pawns. That no, sorry, one pawn. Just one pawn, but this doubled. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's why I like counted it as two. Uh, but this looks over. Uh, this pawn on a4 is actually humongous. Oh, yeah. Right? The a pawn is going to go down the board. No, this one might be. It might be a technical win. It might still need some working and some With finagling, but uh, hard, to hard for me to believe that white is not just winning here because you are up a pawn and it is a good pawn. A, a very pawn. good pawn. A great pawn. You don't even have a resource like Rook D2. Uh, Would this be the first victory for uh, Nico? Yeah, Nico hasn't won a game here yet. But he hasn't lost too many either. No, he, he only lost to Bier. Bier. In, in, okay. a where, in a great game, actually. This King F2, King G3, oh, yeah, King Sindian. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. He played C5. He's really trying to save that pawn. Uh, so agreed. C5. I mean, <laughs> might as well try it. It, Not it, only that it saves the pawn, but also it, it mm. keeps some squares in check. It, it uh, does feel like knight c4 should be winning, right? Like knight c4, a5, just push the pawn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that is a very controlled bishop on g5. That is a very controlled rook that will eventually have to appear on the a file to uh, protect to stop the, the a To pawn. save the pawn. But the thing is, white doesn't need to put the rook behind the pawn. The knight itself defends perfectly fine mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. pawn on a5. So if you do go right now, 
I can take advantage of that and try and to invade. You on, yeah. Invade on the on the D file. And then it's just a matter of time until White actually makes enough progress to win. Yeah. This looks lost. It, it looks completely busted. But this know? would be a, a huge result because that would be Savian's second loss in a row. Yeah. And this is the terrible moment. You could argue Tarma in favor of the Yu Yang Yi. Yeah. 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 No, that's uh, that's 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 a big result. Also, it, it does feel like Sam right now. He's had a tremendous period in his career. He's oh yeah, this is like the best, the best breakthrough from like twenty six fifty now twenty seven plus. Also, fighting hand to hand with the best chess players on the planet. We've seen him battle it out with Fabiano Caruana. He beat Wesley. Wesley so he just beat Wesley at the American Cup. Knocked out Wesley. Aronian and so on, mm -hmm. right? He's playing against the best chess player. He feels like he's on the brink yeah. of big things. I agree. But now maybe he's returning to the mean with two losses. In a row. And, and it's a little a bit row. of pressure, right? You get that final breakthrough into the 2700 club yeah. and you really want to make your mark. You want to make sure that you stay there for a consistent amount of time. Yeah. And this one is such a setback for him. He's losing, I think, 20 rating points even without this game. Oh my goodness, 20 rating points on it, minus one only? Well, no, he is the only 2700 of the group. And there are a couple 2500s in right. this group. Right, Abimanyu, yeah, that's like, like three points right there. Yeah. Right there, I mean, you lose a couple, it, losing you lost another one, seven. that's like 10 points yeah. over there. You, you lose every, Every draw that he gets, at I guess the 2630. Oh, 20 points is it's a point, humongous. Right? 20 points is, is a ridiculous amount of so points. At I this don't know level. if it's 20, but it's between 10 and 20. Yeah. With this loss, we, we might and, be getting with close this loss, to 20. We, we'll be cl even maybe surpassing 20. Wow. Uh, so, definitely a tough tournament for Seven, who's such a talented player, and you definitely want to see him do well. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's just not happening it's here. It's a tough event. And then this is. That's uh, the what, thing with what, this type what, of uh, events, what, right? What, what did happen here? Where, where did things go wrong? Because it feels like the opening didn't really go well for him. Well, we lashed it off after this move night to E3, and we said that White is just having a dominating position. Yeah, the opening just didn't go well for him, and since then, Theodore has really proven why he's such a dangerous player. I mean, I think Rick currently has a reputation for being, being a blitz player more than a chess player. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, he's uh, really trying to turn this around. Uh, he'll be playing the Olympiad for uh, Greece. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Part of the Greek Olympic team. It's going to be his first Olympiad? Yes, it's going to be well. his first Olympiad as well. Uh, actually, a lot of these players are playing their first Olympiad. Uh, JJ Limorandi, who's currently leading the B group, mm -hmm. will also be playing his first Olympiad. He'll be representing uh, Turkey. Oh, so he got, uh, he got selected. He got selected. Uh, so, um, you know, to brag a little bit, the, the Slu Chess team is actually having a lot of people on, the, on the Olympic team. I believe that uh, we have... Uh, Nicolas Tidoro uh, representing Greece. Um, DJ Ali Mirandi, obviously representing Turkey. Tarula Salakido will be yes. representing Greece. Uh, Gabriela Antova will be representing Bulgaria. Bulgaria, yes. And I believe Benjamin uh, Bok will be representing uh, the, Netherlands. the Netherlands. Yeah. That's five players. That's a lot of players. Yeah. That's a lot of players representing uh, St. Louis University as well as their teams. No, that's an amazing roster right there. Now. After F4, and this whole position just seems like it's on the brink of collapse, and this is exactly what happened. I have to say, I'm quite impressed with the way uh, Teodoru, as one of the lower-rated players in this mm -hmm. event, uh, handled himself against uh, some of these players. So a great result for him. This would be, uh, this victory would be a, a tremendous result for him. He has to get there. I think and by the way, probably the, the, the first 27 scalp in his career. Oh, actually, his... Uh um, greatest reading win has been against Benjamin Gladur. Hmm. Who's so only 2650. 2650, yeah. yeah this yeah. would be like way and beyond. Way and beyond anything wow. that uh, he's ever... Actually, I think uh, Sevian is the highest rated player he's ever faced. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Face uh, 2700 plus for the first time and uh, take him down. That's the way to go, young man. Now, this one is looking good for him. Let's go back just for a second to this game between Smirin and Amishra as we are getting ready to sign off in a few minutes. Uh, what do we think of this position, Alejandro? Is he breaking through or no? is Mishra managing to save another game? Um, I wouldn't say like save in the sense that he was lost and he saved it. 
It's possible that he just found a good configuration to defend this draw, and he's going for it because I, I don't I don't feel that this is anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, obviously, why well, it's better because you have the better structure. But how do you ever make progress, right? Bishop d2 does an extra court help you? I, I can actually just stay um, because your king is so controlled by the pawns on c3 and the pawns on e4. But maybe that's the way to go, and then try to play for c3. No, no, no. I just don't move it. Ah, you don't move. I just don't move it. I put my king on. I just start. I just start running my king to d4. Okay, so let's make some moves because this is because with this last move, bishop to e3. This is his plan. But no, not necessarily. Okay, but like I go king e7 here. Sure. Bishop d2, king e3. I'll actually give you a check first. I don't care. King d6. No, because now I go here. You cannot do that. So you have to stay close to the pawns. Oh. In fact, I will go as far as saying that you might have to go to f7. Where are you going to be six? Ah, king e6, bishop e8, king f5. King f5 and now you you're go a check on d7, you trade the bishop. You bishops. cover, I get it. You, 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 you do cover. But this might be lost, right? You take, take, bishop d2 might be lost. Oh, yeah, this is just lost. I think it's just lost, right? It's just lost. Yeah, once I manage to exchange both uh, bishops, this is winning. Because after take, take, I will play c3 the next move. One move, No yeah. matter what you do. Uh, and actually, if you go king e5, I'm going to go king e3. <laughs> Zug -zug, yes, yeah. it's this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, actually, the more I look at the position, with this move, uh, yeah, this but, plan but, but, coming... But okay, I, I go bishop e6, and I, 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 I think that so I don't have to be here, so... Uh, here, here, Now bishop to d3. No, no, I go bishop e6 immediately. Just go bishop e6. First move? Yeah, first move. Okay, that's okay. I'm yeah, go you go d3. there, and I go check on g4. On g4, yeah. And I go king, like, I don't know, e6 or whatever. Sure, I'll take. I think it's a draw. And here I go bishop f3, and I'm going to claim that you, because of the pawn configuration, you actually cannot make progress, which is hmm. kind of uh, kind of silly but kind of funny. Hmm. But so I think it's true. I, I mean, I get this bishop on f3. I see what you're. Uh, I see what you're doing. I think that's it, right? Looks like a draw. No, no, no. But I, I don't believe you. I don't fully believe you. I'll give you a check. Okay. Where do you go? I mean, the, first of all, I'm going to push my pawn. I, I don't think you are. I'm going to go king d6. You're, you're no, going to no, take no. on g6, and I'm not going to care. I'm going to go king c5, take on king, king b4. No. And you don't actually have a plan. I do. I'm going to go g4. I'm going to take with the, pawn, with the bishop. And then I take this. Oh. That's my, that's my plan. Well, I maybe it's a good plan, yeah? Maybe it's enough. I don't know. Maybe. I could take with the h pawn also, right? You could take with the h pawn, and then it gets a bit crazy. But right? then it gets crazy because I, I you probably don't. Probably crazy, but crazier. Well, for probably you. crazy. <laughs> probably <laughs> crazy <laughs> winning. Yeah. I think you're just losing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do this. I, I, I'm not even looking. I at agree with you. Yeah. I go h6, yeah. and that's it. Uh, and by the way, bishop to d4 was played. As we are letting these players uh, duke it out, let's take a look at the standings. And we're going to start off mm -hmm. with standings in Group A. We have the well, Yu Yang Yi game versus it's funny. Kobe and Steel Pen. It's funny because I saw a fire and be like almost last at some point in this tournament. Uh, we actually removed Ray Robson, and unfortunately, Ray Robson is part of the tournament. We shouldn't remove him from the standings. <laughs> he is part of the tournament even if he finishes last. Uh, Yu Yang Yi is currently on four points. He is pending his result. We don't expect him to lose. We don't also expect him to win, Dai. Uh, we uh, thought that was a draw hand game. Grigor Party has won a great game against Jonas Beer. Exciting for the event. I'm not really sure why Benjamin Glendora is being given. Oh, Benjamin Glendora is being given a zero because he's playing Ray Robson. Ah, oh, right. Right, right. So he doesn't get any points from that. Allowing other people to potentially catch him, Abimanyu Mishra being one of them, because Abimanyu Mishra is on three and a half points playing against Mir, and if he defends, he would surpass both Bier and Gladura, and actually Oparin as well, uh, getting to four points. Uh, Sam Simon is currently on three, Aran Hakobian on three, Ilias Mir on two and a half, and Nicolas Hedor is playing actually a huge game, because if he wins this one against Savian, he catapults himself all the way from tight, tight eighth to guaranteed tight third. It's such a such a it, tight it's such a tight tournament. tournament. It is really funny because we have all kinds of uh, round robins, and throughout the years I have had the pleasure of, of experiencing all of these round robins, and I've seen all kinds of things, including uh, spring chess classics where I saw people get 
one point or half a point out of nine, and then mm -hmm. some people winning with oh, yeah. seven. Oh, yeah. And this is completely the opposite. We have two uh, tournaments in which the winner is going to win with maybe plus two mm -hmm. on a great day plus three. It's not much. No. And actually, the, the winner might be decided today in the A group if Yu Yang Yi manages uh, to take uh, over that game right, but, against Aram Hakan. But something else needs to happen, right? Like, Yu Yang Yi needs to win, and then and Mishra needs, to lose. needs to lose, yes. which is not lose. Well, we don't know yet. We don't know we're that. We're not 100% sure. He might, he might lose, yeah. His, we're, we're not 100% sure. And uh, indeed, this one is. And by the way, Yu Yang Yi has a decisive advantage. Does have a decisive. I mean, normally we sign off right here, but uh, I want to I want to take a couple of because uh, I cheated just in order to uh, finish the show. But queen takes a two apparently is winning. Queen takes a two is oh, the only move. I mean, this is not hard. Three takes b five, and then this important move, queen a one check. Nice, nice tickle. Yeah, the nice tickle. You can't really go to the eighth rank because pawn takes. I guess. I mean, that looks terrible. Pawn takes. Yeah, but then I go king h2, and the king is just lost. <laughs> is it? Wait oh, a minute. wait. How is it lost? Take on f7. Ah, but you have king h7 here. <laughs> oh, man. This is, uh, this is some wild stuff right now. Right, but king h7... Yeah, king h7 might... But now I go knight. knight. Oh, my goodness. Knight Rook takes and queen a7, right? This but can rook b7? It's not over. It's not over. <laughs> Actually, it's over. It's over for white. <laughs> for, for the wrong side. Um, wow. What a line. Uh, wow, wait, what? Wow, wow, So, what is the move? Perhaps not take on e6. Perhaps just take on b5 first. You take back. And now I go queen uh, to a8. No, but you put the... Now you yeah, maybe the, maybe this and now is easier, I yeah. take on e6. Yeah, I agree with you. And I understand you have one check, but that's more or less the whole thing that you have in your position. Just a check. Um, and after you take on e6, it does feel like so we're never, just has we're never going to get this. So I'm going to cheat again. You're going to cheat again? Yeah, queen oh a1, goodness, queen a, queen a1, cheating. king h7 is more accurate than king g8. I guess king g8 to have many wins. Takes, takes, rook a6 is one of them. So after. Take, take, rook a6. I mean, this is just over because I'm threatening rook a8 and I'm threatening uh, pawn takes so e6. You try to defend, you just take, take and queen, queen f6. f6. Just picks up everything. Too many pawns. Too many pawns. So you have to go king h7 instead of uh, king g8. Mm -hmm. And somehow, for some reason, queen e5 is the only but sufficiently winning game. Makes a lot of sense. Sure. Centralize the queen, attack a pawn. Why not? Also, takes on e6. Rook c7 is a threat. Yeah. It's a great move. Maybe it's a little bit difficult to understand how powerful it is from uh, from hindsight. A narrow path. For, but it is a narrow for, path uh, for Yu Yang victory for yeah. Yu Yang Yi. But there is a path. There is a path, and it looks pretty over. Theodora's game also looks over. I mean, it is such a crushing position for uh, for Nicolas. Yeah. This is his chance. Uh, Abhimanyu Mishra is still defending against Smirin, and in the big group. We only have one game left. Uh, John Burke is playing against uh, Misha Antipov. But so let's see what happened. Actually, it was knight it looks to d1. Did you see this move? Knight to d1. Uh, that's kind of sick. Not rook to h7. Knight to d1 attacking the rook but, on b2. By the, by the way, so many other moves were like winning easily. <laughs> and then he goes for, uh, and he goes this, for this one. crazy look. But it is also a winning move because... Rook to e3 is coming. Rook to e3 is coming and rook d5, rook takes f5 is also a threat. Rook it d5. does feel like he's getting close to a victory. Uh, Grish, uh, yeah. Mishan Tipo. Which would be a great victory for him because it opens up the tournament. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's going to be half a point behind the leaders. Yeah, which is, behind the leader. which, which, which is JJ. Yep. Yes. JJ Ali Marandi going into the championship round yeah. with half a point advantage. And let's take a look at uh, the standings in Group B. Uh, there we go. JJ Alimaranda did win. Let's quote unquote win his uh, round eight against uh, Brandon Jacobson because, well, we yeah, unfortunately had to withdraw Brandon after he got ill. Five and a half points for him. Guillermo Vasquez with half a point less is on five points. Camille Dragoon on five, four and a half. But the important thing is whether Misha Antipov can win his game, uh, get to five points, and actually pressure Alimaranda because it would set up 
a great matchup on the last round. Antipov. Oh, they're playing against each other. Yeah, Antipov is playing JJ tomorrow, wow. which is uh, why all of this matters <laughs> in, in, in a sense. If Antipov doesn't win this game, it don't, nothing matters because, I mean, JJ is so far ahead. But if Antipov wins, he actually has a shot at the tournament. Well, if he does make a draw, then he's forced to win to, to force, force a playoff. playoff. But if he wins, then he actually has better chances to just finish the tournament. So this, this is a huge result for the tournament standings. And meanwhile, in the A group, if we have those, dot, dot, dot. We uh, do definitely have uh, those. As uh, we, we see that right there. Grigory Aparin with a huge win, three and a half points. Benjamin Glendura did not lose the game. He actually gets zero points for playing Ray Robson. To remind the viewers, Ray Robson uh, withdrew from the tournament because of COVID before the half point mark. So the remaining games, do not count for standings. Therefore, Benjamin Gladura gets a zero point by today against Ray Robson, but uh, Jonas Bier actually loses to Gregory O'Parin and might have a mashup of players on three and a half points, especially if Smirin wins. I mean, if Smirin wins and Theodora wins, we have like <laughs> the tournament 80 opens percent up. of the tournament, three and a half <laughs> points. Wow. Alejandro, as uh, we are uh, getting ready to close off the show, uh, your final thoughts about today's round. I think today sets up tomorrow as great. Uh, of course, we have always the chance to have playoffs, but today especially open up that chance. Oparin winning, uh, Misha barely holding, Theodore winning, uh, Yu Yang Yi potentially not finishing off his game, but Yu Yang Yi might clinch the tournament today. Mm -hmm. But in the B group, everything to play for. JJ uh, obviously got a bye today, but the fact that Vasquez keeps in touch, um, the fact that Antipov wins, with the black pieces against Burke, makes the tournament so much more exciting going into tomorrow's round that I'm really looking forward to tomorrow's broadcast. And don't forget that tomorrow's broadcast, guys, it is early, two hours early tomorrow. We do not start at 1 p.m. The game starts at 11 a.m. tomorrow, Central Time. We start two and a half hours after the round starts at 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Do not miss us as we go on to the final round of the Summer Chess Classic 2022. Love it. A beautiful championship round ahead of ourselves. We will see you tomorrow.
This has been a presentation of the St. Louis Chess Club. Any reproduction or distribution of this content without the express written consent of the St. Louis Chess Club is prohibited.